<laughs> Devil month. Devil month. Big time. What was that? Something fell. That was big time too. Wow. Um. So we're moving on to the last excerpt from five lessons that we're going to read in regards to Neville's specific techniques for how to manifest things. Um, as I mentioned in an earlier video in this series, I'll link to the series above and in the description if you don't um, currently uh, haven't seen all the videos yet. Um, as I already mentioned, you know, these are the techniques that Neville laid out in 1948. Did he change his techniques some over the years? Yes, you could probably say he did. Um, something very, um, I would say, important to mention, because I know it works very well for a lot of people, is revision is not really mentioned in five lessons as a specific technique to manifest something or just as a way to feel better in your life, right? Because revision really can be an effective way to feel better um, in your life about your, your past experiences. Uh, he doesn't talk about that in five lessons. And, and, you know, you could definitely consider revision, the pruning shears of revision, a specific technique, right? But I would argue that the basis of Neville's teaching is really explained well in regards to manifesting stuff just in five lessons. And what really has struck me reading these instructions the last week or so is just how he keeps on hitting home on the same points in regards to what to do. He says it over and over again, over and over again. This is Neville at probably the peak of his practical teaching powers, I would say. Um, very simple to understand. Very simple to understand. And, uh, you know, if you haven't watched the previous videos, I hope you do watch them. Um, if you're interested in, in just, you know, either learning more about the specifics of, of what Neville suggests, or if you just want to refresh yourself on what Neville talks about, because the specific simple instructions here are very easy, e very easily can get lost in the shuffle with all the law of assumption Neville information that's now online. Um, and as I've often said, often confuses us instead of helps us. Um, so the, the fifth lesson, um, he actually repeats a, a lot of the specific instructions that he gave in the, in the previous lessons. Um, I'm not going to read all of them because it's just too much, but at the, you know, near the very end of the lecture, um, he summates it again, um, it, very simply. He says, um, sorry, let me just want to make sure I'm reading from the right place. He says, in applying this technique to change the future, it is important always to remember that the only thing which occupies the mind during the waking dream is the waking dream. The predetermined action and sensation which implies the fulfillment of our desire. How the waking dream becomes physical fact is not our concern. Our acceptance of the waking dream as physical reality wills the means for its fulfillment. That's the thrust of his whole technique right there, right? And what makes it so powerful. He continues, let me again lay the foundation of prayer, which is nothing more than a controlled waking dream. One, define your objective. Know definitely what you want. Two, Construct an event which you believe you will encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. Something which will have the action of self predominant. An event which implies the fulfillment of your desire. Three, immobilize the physical body and induce a state of consciousness akin to sleep. Then mentally feel yourself right into the proposed action until the single sensation of fulfillment dominates the mind. Imagining all the while that you are actually performing the action here and now so that you're experiencing imagination. So you experience in imagination what you would experience in the flesh were you now to realize your goal. 
Experience has convinced me that this is the easiest way to achieve our goal. All right, this is it. This is why like people call this like visualizing on steroids, you know? It's because I actually, I, I would pretty much, you know, agree with Neville. From what I've seen um, in manifesting circles and techniques, reading about them, seeing them in my own life, um, but much more when it comes to like these these specific techniques of Neville's, seeing in some of my clients and then in, you know, readers and also just people you see utilizing these techniques, the kind of people you sometimes see on YouTube or on Reddit who have these amazing, amazing, amazing success stories. It's because this is maybe the easiest way to achieve your goal if you do it correctly and if you really get into it. This Neville's techniques that he lays out here can do amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Um, I think most of you watching this already understand that. And, you know, if you're looking for stories specifically, for some reason, you know, check out The Power of Awareness. He's got a bunch of case histories there. Or The Law and the Promise. The Law and the Promise, you know, the whole first five, six of the book is just success stories. Um, but, you know, this is not an easy technique. It might be the easiest way to achieve your goal if you figure out how to implement it well in your life. But, you know, it's the kind of technique that people think is going to be relatively easy to apply and then for a lot of people is not easy to apply. When it comes to big desires, again, I'm not talking about manifesting a cup of coffee. I'm talking about manifesting, you know, much better health or the love of your life or, uh, you know, the job you really desire big stuff like that if you're using these techniques you know you're probably going to use trial and error and have to really persist and practice using them if you're just using this specific neville technique to manifest what you want because you're going to run into failures neville says right after this however my own failures would convict me were i to imply that i have completely mastered the movements of my attention but i can with the ancient teachers say and then he quotes the Bible. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize. Okay? So failure is part of the process for any manifesting technique as far as I'm concerned. But certainly if you're trying to apply these uh, Neville techniques for, for big, significant life changes. Okay? I've um, never met anybody in my years of talking to people about this stuff who just is able to like manifest one thing after another when it comes to big, big, big things. Um, the closest I've, I've seen is, is people who are just very much in flow and they're not trying to manifest like big external changes. It's more to just like in flow and feel good a lot of the time, right? Which is again what so much of this comes down to. Um, besides the uh, five lessons as we've got over before in previous videos, and again, this should not be the first video of this course that you watch. You should watch some of the preceding videos before this one. It will make a lot more sense what I'm saying in this video if you've done that. Um, you know, there's those great questions and answers at the end of the five lesson lectures. Um, and he talks more about the specific techniques in, in those questions and answers. I'm just going to read one more time uh, if I can quickly find it. I think I just lost the page. Um, question 22 from the question and answers somebody asked neville after these lectures what is your technique of prayer and neville says it starts with desire for desire is the mainspring of action you must know and define your objective then condense it into a sensation which implies fulfillment when your desire is clearly defined immobilize your physical body and experience in your imagination the action which implies its fulfillment Repeat this act over and over again until it has the vividness and feeling of reality. Or condense your desire into a single phrase that implies fulfillment, such as, thank you, Father, isn't it wonderful, or it is finished. Repeat that condensed phrase or action in your imagination over and over again. Then either awaken from that state or slip off into the deep. It does not matter for the act is done when you completely accept it as being finished in that sleepy, drowsy state. 
So, yeah, Neville's uh, specific advice is really not that complicated when it comes to manifesting. I hope that mini courses, this mini course has made you see that more. Um, Neville's so articulate and was so Bible based that his stuff can sound really confusing. And, you know, I, I personally like spiritual sounding literature and, you know, I, I like his biblical interpretations and stuff like that. It interests me. I've always been interested in that kind of stuff, but it's really not that relevant to the technique, the actual technique. And hopefully this course has made you, you see that. Okay. This, these videos, um, yeah, so that's, that's that, um, we might do a little bit of Neville week, uh, Neville month later, later next week. We'll see. Um, we might have some special guest appearance people from the, uh, Neville subreddit, the former moderators. We'll see. We might be able to get them on. Um, so stay tuned for, for that perhaps being here. And, uh, if you have any questions or if you want to go deep with me, not just on Neville's techniques, but <laughs> manifesting and more importantly feeling better in general and being more in flow i'm available for uh coaching and counseling questions coaching and counseling all that stuff information on my books podcasts etc visit www.radicalcounselor.com until next time